Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this video, we're doing something a little bit different. As this year comes to a close, so too does a decade. And it's not only a decade of collecting for all of us, it also happens to be the end of a decade of me being on YouTube, me creating these types of videos, though many of them early on were, uh, let's say, less than high quality. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so anyway, I thought it would be a good idea, regardless of what other top 10 videos we do to end out this year, and again, we'll talk about that in a minute, um, I thought it would be a good idea to look back on everything that we've done over the last 10 years. And so I thought maybe it might even be important to take a look at some of the things that got us to where we are. We've seen drastic changes in the action figure industry over the last 10 years, and even beyond that. And so... When I was trying to decide what to do about this top 100 figure list, I decided instead of making it just top 100 figures of the decade, I thought let's let's go a little bit farther. Let's go, let's go ahead and just do the top 100 figures that I've looked at. So that basically means everything from this past decade plus anything from prior. So there's a lot of stuff I had to consider for this video. So I think it'll be kind of interesting and like I said, maybe even important to look at where we started as this kind of modern action figure industry kind of developed. You know, we've had action figures around for decades and decades now, but I don't really want to talk about the older stuff. I want to talk about the modern industry, because I think, I think it's safe to say the action figure industry was kind of going like this. I'd say it kind of really took off in the 80s, but then, somewhere around the 2000s, it just went like this, and things became really modern. And so that's mostly what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at some of the things go back as far as, like, early 2000s a little bit, but there's it's mostly the last decade. By far, mostly the last decade, but there are some things back then that do still hold up that I have reviewed on this channel and that I thought it would be good to include because I think it'll be interesting and, like I said, maybe even important to compare some of the older things to the newer things and see how they stack up and see which things were good and maybe which things are better now and maybe which things that aren't. And uh, I think it should be, it'll be good. It'll be good to give us an idea of maybe where the industry's going and how it can change and how it can be better. Or maybe it is better. Who knows? We'll see about all that. So as I mentioned, we're not only kind of doing a retrospective on the action figure industry and doing this top 100 video. We're also sort of in a second kind of way, secondary kind of way, looking at my channel. We're not really going to be talking about my channel or anything like that. But I thought it would be kind of fun in order, instead of doing... Uh, like a whole new little spin around of the figure on the platform for this video, which would get kind of dry and boring. I thought it would be more fun and turned out a whole lot more work to uh, use clips from my original reviews for each of these figures. I have reviewed everything on this list and you can go check them out individually if you want to, but I thought it would be fun to kind of see how how things have changed over the years for my channel just kind of as we're going through the list. You'll, you'll see clips from the original reviews where I talked about the figures. So some of them are going to be in 480, square, uh, 4 to 3 or 3 to 4 ratio, whatever it is, which hasn't existed in forever, basically, now, for most of you. And so it'll be, it'll be fun. Some of it's going to be super low quality, and some of it's going to be like what you see every day now. So I, I don't know, I thought it'd be fun to look back, and I think there's enough good, it's enough good video to make it work. I mean, you're definitely going to recognize the quality difference, but I think that's okay. I think it'll be fun, and I'm going to be talking over everything won't be my face, you'll just hear my voice, and we're going to talk about all 100 figures in one video. I know that sounds daunting, but I cut it down as much as I possibly could, and so it's not going to be like this huge spiel on every single thing. We're going to go over it as concisely as possible, and hopefully I don't repeat myself too much. But uh, I think it should be a fun kind of retrospective on the industry and on my channel at the same time. Okay, before we get into it, there's two more things I want to address very quickly. One is that oftentimes when I do my top 10 videos, people like to comment in the comment section below which figures on the top 10 list they own. And for this one, since we're talking about a whole decade, we could be encompassing people's entire collections. So I think, I said collections kind of funny. So I think it would be fun, and of course you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think it would be fun for you guys to keep a tally, not necessarily which because there's going to be a ton, uh, but how many of the figures on the list you have. And then by the end of the video, we'll be able to judge your human value based on the number of collectibles you have on my top 10, top 100 list. Let, go ahead, if you feel like sharing, let us know in the comment section below which, how many you have. Not which ones, because that'd be a long comment. Okay? Okay. All right, and then the last thing we have to talk about is just my criteria for this list. A list is useless without you knowing why things are on it. So, in considering all 100 things, which is actually considering like, I don't know, 4,000 things. 
um, close to 4,000 things I've looked at over the last 10 years, uh, I decided to ignore my top 10 lists altogether because not necessarily is something good one year just because it was the best last year. You know what I mean? So I didn't really use my top 10 lists at all other than to grab some footage occasionally. Uh, I went through everything basically. I just combed through my entire video list and decided which things I thought belonged on this list. And the criteria I use are the following more or less there was a lot of fudging to decide which things go anywhere because any day i do this it could be a different list it, it, there's a lot to consider when doing a list like this so the first thing is your basic cost per value what are you getting for your money is it a good buy that kind of thing that's your number one criteria that i'm using for this number two is what's the quality compared to everything else at the time that's a key factor for this one because we're comparing things that are as many as 15 years old in some cases to things that are brand new. So you can't necessarily make a direct comparison, though if they're on this list in many ways you can. We are considering it for the time period it came out and then kind of at the same time its longevity and how well it holds up over the years. Another factor I'm considering is just a completely subjective one, but... Is there a wow factor? Is there an X factor? Is there something about that item that makes it stand out? Whether it's on instant recognition or if you have to think about it, either way, is there something about it that makes it stand out? And then the very last criteria, that's a real criteria, uh, is character importance. Is it a really good figure, but it's of a character nobody really cares about? And this was one I used only to really kind of make a tiebreaker decision. I very, very rarely considered this, but in some cases there are some figures on this list that are where they are because of the character, um, just because I think that does play into it at least a little bit. I mean, nobody cares how good a figure is if it's nothing. You know, if nobody cares about who the character is, it doesn't matter how good the figure is in some cases. So that was a very tiny factor, but I did use that. And then the other factor I used, which isn't a real factor, but I had to because I'm a person, and this is a top 100 list out of thousands of figures, my personal preference. I had to put that in there a little bit, I had to make lots of lots of tough decisions, so I did that. But you'll see, especially when we get to the top 10, um, some of these are not my personal preference at all, but they're really good figures, so I put them on there, okay? All right, so that's enough of me talking. Let's get into the video. We're going to start with 100 and work our way all the way down to number one. Coming in at number 100, we have the DC Universe Classics Ares figure. This guy is a great example of how good some of the DC UC figures could be. I think many people didn't really give them a fair shake because of their dated articulation even for the time, but they did have some really strong releases. This guy's, like I said, he's a really good example. There's a good enough amount of paint, some really nice molded plastics, unique sculpt work. This guy definitely has a little bit of shelf appeal, nice presence, and he's going to look good up against just about anything you put him up against. For 99, we're going to look at another DCUC figure simply because, as far as I'm concerned, this is still the best 6 inch or 112 scale Joker. This is obviously just the basic Joker, or you could take the black suit one from the Mad Love 2 pack if you want, but uh, you don't get much better than this in terms of a 6 inch guy in a suit, and, and especially Joker, very nice colors, nice paintwork, good enough articulation. This is the one you want to get if you need a 6 inch Joker. In at 98, we're looking at an oldie but a goodie. We have the Joyride Halo CE Master Chief. This guy came out well before the decade, but it is an exceptionally good figure for its time. The level of accuracy is astonishing. The nice vacuum chrome visor on there, they don't flake or chip or anything like some other figures do. They have nice paintwork with some, some like damage and stuff and just really good sculpt and pretty solid articulation. Coming in at number 97, we have a DCUC Steppenwolf, which is another great example from that line. And I know what you're thinking, are we gonna have all domestics? No, you'll notice it attend toward more expensive stuff as the list comes down, but that's not really how I decided what was good. These just happen to be a bunch of the same figures toward the end of the list. It's just the way it worked out. But Steppenwolf is a great example. Lots of sculpt, lots of paint, great shelf presence. For 96, we have the Halo 3 McFarlane Toys Brute Chieftain. This is a great example of how good McFarlane Toys can be. 
Look at the sculpt and the paint detail on this thing. It is astonishing. It's exceptionally good. It's such a nice figure. Yes, the articulation is limited due to the sculpt because that's what it, the figure looks like or the character looks like, but they did a really, really good job with what they had to work with and all of the points of articulation are there. Somebody look at this from, what, a $12 price point and tell me that McFarlane can't do better than the Doom Slayer that they just released today for $10, more than $10, more than this. It's not even close. This thing's astonishing for when it came out and it still holds up today very well. In at 95, we are looking at the DCSH Superman in 480 Glory. This is an old video, and it's a really old figure, but for what it is, I think it's pretty solid. When this thing came out, there was no Superman that was as good as this, and honestly, I'm not sure there is today. You can get the regular version or the black suit version. They're both basically the same figure, and they have solid paints, decent articulation, and a very comic-esque sculpt. They look like they jumped out of the pages. Yes, the articulation is dated, I get it. But for the price point at these that these were when they came out, you couldn't do any better. And like I said, it's still arguably the best one there is. I mean, obviously there's some personal preference involved, but this one's a really solid release. In at 94, we have the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Colossus figure, which I know is gonna upset some of you who really like the new one. I really like the new one too, but this one was stylized in such a way that it made sense. Everything looked like it was supposed to be there. Yes, it's not perfect. I get it. The chrome isn't chrome at all, and it does have interesting stylings, but the new one has that crazy forearm thing in the bad feet, and it's just too much wrong with it, whereas this one is exactly what it's supposed to be. Plus, for the time, it's incredible, and it still holds up today. In at 93, we are looking at the Marvel Legends Blade figure from the movie. And this figure definitely has its shortcomings, don't get me wrong, it's a very old figure and it has some very dated aspects, shall we say. But this guy is a solid plastic action figure like you would expect from Toy Biz Marvel Legends, but it comes with the pleather jacket, which is as good as some of the pleather jackets we see today for action figures. The scaling is very well handled. It looks very nice on the figure. It has great accessories. It poses very well. But the most important thing about this figure is the head sculpt. And then, of course, the paint job for the hair on the back of his head. But the head sculpt is amazing it is probably the best likeness any domestic company has ever done on a figure that cost what 15 dollars when this came out it makes the hot toys figure which is the one on the left look like absolute garbage it's not perfect i get it but it is really damn good that looks like wesley snipes as blade i think we should take a moment just to remember how good the first blade movie really was and uh and just appreciate this figure for what it is because Goodness, it's uh, it's one of the best Marvel Legends for some aspects that there have ever been. That head sculpt alone. It's just amazing to me that they made it back then and they can't do better now. 492, we have the Play Arts Kai variant Wolverine. Again, I know this is going to ruffle some feathers, but this figure is one of the most fun figures I own. Yeah, it has definitely some issues with stylization and the claws are kind of weird and it has big joints for the elbows, but look at the paint job and the sculpt work on this thing. It is something to behold. It looks great on a shelf and you can pose the crap out of this thing and it looks good in just about every pose. Also, for those older guys out there, it does bring back some memories of some of the more crazy figures that were released in the uh, later 90s, early 2000s. It's got some of that kind of crazy styling on there, and it's just a ton of fun. It's a great representation of Logan, and I think if you're a Wolverine fan, you'd do yourself a favor to add one of these to your collection. 491, we're looking at the DC Universe Classics Plastic Man, which is an SDCC exclusive, but I just had to include this because even when it came out, I loved it, and I, it was a great thing. It came with alternate legs, it had the spring bottom, it had different accessories and stretchy arms and just all kinds of options. And today we're getting figures that don't come with alternate legs when they have weird bottom halves. If, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, you can let me know in the comment section below. And it's just a great representation of everything they can do on an action figure when they're willing to put in the effort. 
Coming in at number 90, we have the SH Figure Arts Mark IV Iron Man, which is one of my personal favorites, but the lack of screen accuracy does hold it back a little bit. It is definitely a, a good looking figure. It's a ton of fun to pose. This suit's just not as accurate as some other figures have been for the movie, so I didn't put it any higher, but this one is one you definitely want to add to your collection if you're an MCU Iron Man fan. One of the best features about this thing, other than the overall nice finish and good look, it does come with a Tony Stark head, which is an exceptional likeness. It's not perfect. I think we could go back and look at that blade figure and see more accuracy there. But this one, it's still pretty darn good. It looks a lot better with the glasses on, so I think it's important to remember that it does come with the glasses. And there you go. You have your perfect Robert Downey Jr. head sculpt on a really solid Iron Man action figure. Comes with a box of donuts, you can recreate some scenes. So despite the flaws in accuracy, it's still a really strong release, and it's definitely one that you should have in your collection. Coming in at 89, we have the Marvel Legends Green Goblin figure. This is one that I've said since I reviewed it in the very beginning, it's one of the best Marvel Legends they've made. It's a very strong release, it's got great accuracy, great posability. Comes with nice accessories, you can get the alternate version with the different head, but it comes with the glider. It's it's just the kind of figure we don't see much these days. Lots of unique sculpt work, more unique sculpt work than I think most people recognize because Hobgoblin's a little bit different in some ways, but really strong release. And for 88, speaking of Hobgoblin, let's go ahead and take a look at him. He's got a little bit more sculpt work and makes him a little bit of a better figure, but again, a great likeness for the character. All around fun looking figure, it catches the eye. Some nice accessories, nice paint work, though not a ton. As you'll see, it doesn't always take a ton of paint, just enough to make it look good. And he comes with an exceptional glider. That's the thing that really sold me on this, on top of the posability and accuracy and articulation and all that kind of stuff. His glider is really nice, and this guy's going to look great on a shelf. And we just don't see figures like this anymore, so I wanted to include him. For 87, we're going to look at the Mezco Sub-Zero, because these, these Mezco Mortal Kombat figures are incredibly well detailed. The paintwork is really clean, the sculpt work is really clean, we do lack some articulation. But this is something that's quite old now and it still very easily holds its own in those departments up against anything today. Especially things that have the same amount of articulation that just doesn't function. So these guys are, if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, ones you definitely want to track down. You do have some limited posability of course. But for the price point when they came out, and probably even to this day, they're, they're astonishing. They're beautiful to look at. Really, really strong figures. In at 86, we have the C-16 Henkei Dinobot. And I know what you're thinking. Based on today's standards and what we have now, this thing is not very good. But do remember when it released. It was by far the best Dinobot figure, and it is pretty impressive for the time. Yeah, the tail part's kind of janky, I get it, but the transformation's fairly accurate, and it does turn into a really solid action figure once you're done transforming it. And on top of all of that, it has really solid paintwork, nicely molded plastics, a chrome sword, a spinning whatever twirly thingy, and even the Dinobot mode isn't, or the dinosaur mode, beast mode, it's not too bad. It does some things really, really well. And when it came out, this thing was the, the cat's meow, or it's pajamas. I don't know why those sayings exist, but they do. And this was that. This was the one you wanted to have. In at 85, we have Marvel Legends Angela figure. Uh, this figure is really popular for a very small group of people. Um, mostly because Angela is not the most recognized character. It is, however, a great example of what Hasbro can do when they put their mind to it. And I know how budgets work and some figures get them and some figures don't, but I think more figures can be closer to this than not. And this is a good one for sure. It's got tons of unique molded parts, tons of molded parts in different colors, a fair amount of paint, and what paint is on there is accurate. We have accessories, it poses well. There's just not really anything this figure leaves you wanting. It's a perfect example of what can be done with not that much effort, because they did reuse a lot of these parts, but the right amount of paint in the right places, it's all you need. It's a really, really good release. At 84, we are looking at the DC Universe Classics Lobo. Mostly because this is still the best Lobo figure. We'll see how that happens to be when, when Storm releases theirs. But this guy is, this guy's going to be a contender for some years to come. He's loaded with detail, whether it's just the texturing on the jacket, the sculpt of the 
access well his accessories even though you can't do anything with them like the belt and pouches things like that tons of paint tons of sculpt work really really nice figure great shelf appeal must have if you're a dc fan for 83, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Tiger and Bunny Origami Cyclone. This figure is incredible in so many ways. It breaks a little bit too easily, and it's not a predominant character really at all, and that's why he's so far back on the list. But holy baloney, this thing is riddled with detail. Whether it's paint or sculpted detail, it's just nuts. It's one of the most detailed figures I've ever seen at a price point below 50 bucks. This guy is just insane if you're one of those people who just collects cool figures and you don't care about the character at all this is one you want to track down it's gnarly it has really good articulation too just like i said it does it does break pretty easily and has some very small parts that tend to break and lots of breaking and paint chipping and stuff like that but if you just want to look at it it's it's right up your alley it's it's an incredible release Number 82 on the list is the Marvel Legends 80 Years Captain America. Many people are going to want that higher on the list, but it just doesn't belong up there. We don't have enough paint on this guy. We don't have enough nice things about it. Now, that sounds bad, but let me finish. It is a really good Captain America release. It has some unique sculpt work. They did a pretty good job on the chest. They added the scale mill. There's some shading across the top with the metallic. It's just not very uniform and... I mean, it, it's it's definitely a strong release that's on the list. It made the cut, so be happy with that. But just realize that it's, it still has a very cookie cutter feel to it. Some of the parts are reused, a, a good portion of them are. And it doesn't have any, I guess, soul. It just, it kind of feels dead. It, it's a nice figure, but it's not special. Coming in at 81, we have the Marvel Legends Beast. I think probably in the same boat as Captain America. Many people wanted it farther up. And it is a great figure. Again, it made the list. This sculpt for Beast is overall really, really nice. They did a, as good a job as I, was, as I would expect for the articulation. It's very impressive in many ways. I, I personally really enjoy this figure. However, <laughs> that shading on the hair, it just destroys it. It It's... Probably better than not having any, but that doesn't make it good shading. The way they did the splotchy, almost black shading, it does detract from the figure. And the figure's face being a different blue and glossy, that's not great. And it also has a fairly soft sculpt for the face, even though it is overall a pretty accurate sculpt. It's very nice, but definitely has its fair share of problems. For number 80, we have the NECA AVP Predators. Go ahead and take your pick. They're all essentially the same figure. But for the $20 price point, you really aren't going to get much of a better Predator figure than this. These guys are just loaded with detail. There's plenty to choose from with unique stylings. And they're just they're just all around awesome. They're not flawless. None of the figures on this list are. Although some are pretty darn close. These guys do have some issues. But all in all, you're going to get your money's worth. And you're going to really enjoy it. And it's going to look great on a shelf. Sure, some limited posability. But they're stunning to look at. And that, that goes a long way on a figure like this you're easily getting your $20 worth on these guys. For number 79, we are gonna look at the Robot Damashi Extreme Gundam, which is a fairly bland Gundam at first sight, but then you have all of these different parts that connect to it, and it's it's probably the most involved figure under $50 I've ever seen. It, it was just insane. The number of accessories is crazy, and you're getting to see a good portion of them here, and you get different molded plastics and clear parts and painted parts, and it's it's very nice to look at. And then there's an option part set, which isn't really fair for me to include, but I am because it's awesome. And it makes him even more big and insane and crazy. And it's just that it's it's quite expensive to add the option part set, so I didn't put him higher up on the list. But if you're into Gundam or just cool mecha at all, this is the one for you. It is just riddled and loaded with stuff. It's very busy, but it's very fun. For number 78, we have the McFarlane Toys Halo 3 Master Chief. And really any of the Spartans, because they're all essentially the same figure, so you can pick any of them. But this is a, another great example of how good McFarlane Toys can be when they, when they try and when they care. These Halo figures were $12. Yes, they're a little smaller than your average 6-inch figure, but they were $12. They had tons of paint. You could pose the ever-living crap out of them, and they look great. I mean, good sculpts, good everything. You could buy different weapon sets and vehicles and everything, and it's, it's just a great example of a time we don't have anymore. 
For number 77, we have NECA's Kratos, the classic Kratos without the beard. And it's a really, really good figure, guys. It's on the list for a reason. It's got really, really nice paint. I, I think that's probably the best part about this, though the sculpt, probably equally as good. Really nice sculpt. The paint brings it to life, though. Fantastic quality. Uh, except for some of the articulation, he does have some floppiness, some, some loose joint issues, so yeah, he's not higher up on the list because of that, though I think you Kratos fans will probably be happy as we go along the list here. This guy's a really strong release. Again, I want you guys to remember, just because a figure's lower on the list, that doesn't make it a bad figure. We're talking about the top 100 out of a whole decade plus some, so if it's on here, it's definitely good. And this is a great example of what NECA can do when they put their minds to something. Really, really strong release. In at number 76, we have the SH figure. It's Wild Tiger or Bunny. We're going to do either one. I'm going to put them in the same spot because they're kind of like they're almost the same figure. They're both kind of mechanical hero like Iron Man suit type figures and they have the same attributes and it's my list and I wanted to. But uh, I would recommend honestly the style two or version two of either Wild Tiger or Bunny. They're both really, really fantastic. You can see they're chock full of detail, unique sculpts on all of them and unique paintwork and translucent parts and metallic parts and chrome parts and it's just they're really exceptional figures uh especially at the price point that you can usually get them for fairly cheap even on the second hand market but they're poseable they're nice they have some joint issues some of them tend to break and some of them get a little floppy that's why they're not so high on the list but they're still really really incredible figures and if you're into them or just into cool things these are ones for you they're gonna look incredibly good on a shelf they're very dynamic and they're definitely going to catch the eye in at 75 we have the play arts kai devil may cry for dante this is kind of a leftover of the earlier play art play arts era where they weren't quite the kai figures yet but they kind of were and it, it's just a very different thing than what we see nowadays or at least recently from from square enix this guy is just totally covered in detail, whether it's sculpt or paint, and it's very, very well executed. His articulation works as well as you would expect any figure to work. I mean, they're not perfect, like I said, but very nicely done. And at 74, we have Hasbro's Transformers Prime First Edition Optimus Prime. Uh, short of a little bit too much brown on this guy, which I never really understood, this is almost a perfect Transformer release, especially given the price point. This guy comes in at under $20 originally, and as far as screen accuracy goes, you don't get much better than this. When he's transformed, he has virtually no kibble. There's not really any backpack. Looks just like he does on screen. He poses really well, and he has a decent vehicle mode as well. There's really not a lot to complain about for this guy, other than probably too much brown paint, which is definitely a bummer. For number 73, we have the Marvel Legends Modern or Udon Taskmaster. It's not quite Udon, but it, it mostly is. And this guy is one that I think people will be surprised to hear reuses a lot of parts. It's not an incredibly new figure in any way, but it's a great example of how Hasbro can make a really solid release with minimal effort. Just enough paint, just enough mold variants in terms of the silvers or the blues or whatever. Pop a couple of accessories in there. You have a really good figure. One of the most notable things though is the ankle articulation uses ball hinges and like I said, alternate heads and some accessories. It doesn't take much to give people what they want and it just seems that Hasbro has trouble doing that sometimes and this is a great reminder of how to do it the right way without spending a ton of money. Number 72 on the list goes to the Storm Collectibles Street Fighter V Arcade Edition Goki, or Akuma, if you want to call him that. And you guys know I personally love Akuma, and I'd be happy to put him higher up on the list, but this figure does have a few issues, whether it be the ankles limitations or the face accuracy, but it is definitely a really good release, and probably, I'd have to say, it's probably the best Akuma action figure to date. A uh, dollar per pound, it's it's probably the most solid. It has really strong paintwork, good articulation for the most part, has some accessories. Uh, there's not a lot missing with this guy. And at 71, we have the Marvel Legends Hydra Supreme. Not counting Artem Zola here, just the Captain America guy. And it's a lot like Taskmaster, that's why they're so close together. They share a lot of the same parts, but it's another great example of how easy it is to make a figure that stands out. It doesn't cost a lot of money. There's like three new parts on this figure. Maybe four. Whatever, you get my point. It doesn't take much. This is an excellent figure. One of the best things about it 
the proportions. If they can get proportions right, they can make it cheaper, inexpensive to produce figure look really good. It looks better than it would otherwise, just because it looks, has the right silhouette. Almost no paint on this guy, doesn't matter. Just enough molding, just enough sculpt, that's all it takes. And another great example of how Hasbro can give us really strong product when they put their minds to it. Coming in at number 70, we have the Figma Kill La Kill Ryuko Mat Toy, which is, uh, yes, I know, you're gonna say it, it's it's just because of the under boob, and you're right, under boob is all it takes really to get on this list. No, these are, these are strong figures, these Kill La Kill figures. Say what you want about the show, but this figure is about as accurate and well done as you can get from Figma. They just absolutely nailed these guys, and that's why at number 69, we also have the Kiryuin figure. It is basically on the same level as the other one, but probably just a little bit cleaner. Uh, the white plastic is flawless, and the paint jobs on there are, it's just incredible. Very well handled, it poses very nicely, it has wonderful accessories, again, show accuracy, and under boob. And at 68, we have the neck of Ryu from Street Fighter 4. I know some people don't like the face, but it's mostly accurate. But these guys came out at a time where you didn't have a whole lot of hyper-articulated figures. They have butterfly joints, double-jointed elbows, ball hinge wrists. I mean, just, maybe not ball hinge wrists. Just about everything you would want in a figure. And lots of shading, lots of paintwork, unique sculpts. These guys are really, really solid figures, and I don't think they get enough credit. Definitely one of my favorite sets of figures in my collection. Save for a couple like Sea Viper, maybe. In at 67, we have the Play Arts Kai Street Fighter IV Arcade Edition Sakura. I think it was Arcade Edition. And this is a figure where it's another good example of what Play Arts can do when they try. It does have some issues with proportions and whatnot, but it does look really good and is particularly accurate. And you can pose the crap out of this figure, and it works really well. For 66, we're looking at the Figma Link. This is the Skyward Sword version, which is the first real Link action figure that was hyperposable. And it's not perfect, it definitely has some issues, and I don't know why my original review had the yelling face on it, but it makes me laugh every time I see it. But this guy is one of those figures where you just put it on the shelf and you have fun. You're gonna enjoy looking at it, you're gonna enjoy posing it, and it's gonna look great. It's gonna catch people's attention. If you're a Zelda fan, you need this version of Link. It's the best Link figure out there and it's just super fun. Definitely a must have. For number 65, we are looking at the DC Superheroes Doomsday figure. And this guy is a great example of a figure that's kind of timeless. Look at the amount of sculpt work on this guy. It clearly reuses some parts, but the parts that it couldn't reuse, they added new parts for, and it is painted throughout. It has shading, it has the appropriate clean paintwork where it needs it. You could of course get the Heat Vision one, but probably don't want to. And it's just, this one's gonna look good on your shelf up against any other figure, even contemporary figures. This thing's like maybe 10 years old now. I want to say it's probably about 10 years old, pretty close to it. And it'll compete against any of the current Mattel offerings or any of the current Hasbro offerings. Really nice anatomy on this thing. Again, lots of sculpt work, lots of paint. This guy's gonna be around for a while, I think. This is a really good example of how the supposedly terrible DCUC type articulation or type bodies, they can really be really nice figures. Definitely one you wanna add if you uh, have any desire for a Doomsday figure. Number 64 goes to the MP01 Optimus Prime. Probably the first really great Optimus Prime figure uh, this one does transform, which is important for those of you. It has some really cool accessories, tons of die cast, lots of chrome and, and clear parts, and all around just a really great figure. It transforms well, it poses really well. Uh, it does have some issues with the die cast lining up properly and then some weight issues for posing, but all the, otherwise it's a really, really great figure. Number 63 goes to the Marvel Legends face-off Captain America. This is a figure that just oozes soul. It oozes character. Whoever built this, they put their heart into it and they made sure that the essence of Captain America came through. Yes, it came from a time period where quality control was not the best for Toy Biz. You can see some of the paint is a little iffy and it's not the best, but we do have lots of shading and we do have the paint and lots of unique sculpt work and detailed sculpt work, wrinkles in the pants, details on the belt, scale mill throughout, wrinkles in the sleeves. There's not a part of this figure that wasn't addressed and given the detail and attention it needed. It is just, it is a perfect example of how a figure can be created with, 
with passion. In for number 62 is another figure created with passion, and that is the air quotes McFarlane Spider-Man. Again, it's not a perfect release, I get it, it's too skinny for a lot of people and that's valid, but it is still one of the best Spider-Man figures. It's loaded with detail, the paintwork on there is there, it has a very nice style to it. It's not just another cookie cutter figure, which seems to be a lot of the trend a lot of the new companies are going with, or new. A lot of the old companies are going with for their new figures. It's it's just so nice to see a figure that looks like it was built to be that figure, and not a figure that was built to just be a bunch of different ones with a Spider-Man head on it. This guy is probably the best example of, of the Spider-Man figure that we all really want to have. In for number 61, we have the Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat Ninjas. Uh, these guys definitely had a few issues on, on release with some quality control, but that's, that's pretty much where the problem stopped. You know, I guess you could complain about the proportions and the scaling, but all in all, these are the, probably the best Mortal Kombat figures to date, at least for the ninjas, and they're gonna be really fun to pose. I think that's really the strongest attribute for these guys. You can pose the crap out of them and it works. They are really well articulated, and they have enough paint and molded parts to look really good, and they're just gonna have great presence on the shelf. They all have their unique parts, so you can make them look like they're supposed to, and. There's just not a lot to dislike about these guys. They're very fun figures. For number 60, we are going to look at the Marvel Icons, Marvel Legends Icons Thor figure. This is the first 12 inch line of Marvel Legends figures that came out forever ago and I'm pretty sure they retailed for 20 bucks. Uh, yeah, I know the prices have changed, but it's still just to give you an idea. These guys, I'm pretty sure, and correct me if I'm wrong, they were only $20. And look at the sculpt and the detail on these things. Compare those to the 12-inch figures that Hasbro released recently, which are at the $50 price point. So let's say even the prices are awash. Let's say the prices are comparable. These things blow the new ones out of the water. It's not even close. These were made with such care. It's a shame we don't get figures like this anymore. Number 59 goes to the Play Arts guy, Timeless Sparta Batman, which is one that probably would be higher on the list if it wasn't just some crazy made up thing, but this is one of the best looking, most detailed, most fun to look at, most interesting figures I have in my collection. If you're a Batman fan at all, you are gonna find something to appreciate about this. It's a great example of what Play Arts figures could be, despite some issues with articulation and cumbersome features. Uh, it, it's just, it's it's a really stunning figure, and when posed properly, it looks like a little statue. It's really incredibly well done, very impressive, and it's a shame that Play Arts went the way they did, because they did have the ability to make some really nice product. In for 58, we have the NECA Quarter Scale Arkham Knight Batman, or if you really want to, you can take the Arkham Origins Batman. I, they're both on there, and, and it's a really good figure, but the Arkham Knight one is better it, it has better articulation more details it's not one of the first ones as opposed to the other batman and it's it's probably the best action figure of that batman design that has ever been made and that's not to say that they were all terrible this one is just really good and most of them are terrible but this one is really good for a quarter scale figure you can pose it just about as well as any normal size figure got tons of detail tons of accessories very accurate to the source material if you're a batman fan you're going to love having this in your collection for numbers 57 through 53, we're looking at the Robot Damashi Gundam Wing figures. And I, they're all unique figures, so they do get their own numbers. You can pick which one is which. But I wanted to include them all in one, mostly because I had that video on, on, on hand. No, it's just that they're all essentially the same. I mean, they're all unique sculpts, but the engineering's about the same. They all have the same level of quality, and I couldn't pick which ones were better than the others. But I definitely wanted to put them on the list. Uh, they're just really, really good figures. They're a great example of Robot Damashi figures that aren't crazy and over the top and, and of probably less prominent suits like the Extreme Gundam from earlier. These guys are some of the most recognizable Gundams in the Gundam universe. And I think, I think they're a good entry point for a lot of collectors because they're not like the super serious heavy mech things. These guys have pretty unique and fun designs and bright colors. And they pose well and they have unique features like dragon arms that extend and and just, they're kind of crazy, but they're kind of fun. They're like the Dragon Ball of Gundam, if Gund G Gundam wasn't a thing. They're a little bit more serious, but you could probably find one of these that you're going to really enjoy. And, and I think they're just like, 
I don't know, they're kind of like a perfect mix of fun and serious mobile suits, rather than the more traditional mobile suits or the crazy ones from G Gundam. I think these are the these are the way to go for new collectors or people who are, are not quite into the Gundam stuff. The one right here, the Wing Zero, is my personal favorite. It has a more traditional color scheme and a less out there design, but it does have a little bit of the fun to it. So if you're thinking about getting into this stuff, any of these might be a great one to choose. For number 52, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Broly, the classic Broly, not the new one, the classic one, which was super popular at the time and then it got three different reissues and they all sold incredibly well. There's three different color schemes, you'll see them all here, you can pick whichever one you like. As far as figures go, they're all the same other than the color of paint. A really nice figure, it's gonna have that extra wow factor, if somebody's looking at your collection, this one's gonna draw their attention. This one's gonna stand out. It's humongous, it's heavy, it's well painted, it's well sculpted. It, it can be a little tricky to pose sometimes, but it's gonna look good. It's gonna look good pretty much no matter what you do with it. And as far as the Dragon Ball figures go, it's probably the most standout-ish out of all of them. So it's the one you definitely have to have, whether you pick the older color scheme or the more new one, any of them are gonna be great options. For number 51, we are looking at the Storm Collectible Street Fighter V Zangief. And this guy is one of my personal favorites. I absolutely love this figure despite his flaws. I do wish his chest was broader and bigger and he had some traps and, and he had a little bit more of that angry look that Zangief normally has, but it's still incredible. There's something about the skin tone and the way they did it on this guy. It's just, I don't know. Maybe a guy, I have, I have a thing for a big, almost naked Russian guys with funny shaped hair on his chest. I don't know, but this figure is just, it's almost as good as they get. Despite the flaws, there's something about it. I can't put my finger on it. I guess it's the wow factor. Maybe it's just for me, but I think if you're into collecting these guys, this is one you should definitely seek out. Number 50, halfway through, we are looking at the new Lightning Collection Lord Zed from Hasbro. Uh, again, a great example of what can be done if they try. And I, I get it, the whole budget thing is a thing, but I think they can sacrifice a little bit more of their budget if I'm being frank. Anyway, this guy is absolutely 100% new sculpt. He doesn't have a ton of paint, but the paint that's on him is done enough to make him look good. He's got a wash, he's got the blue tubers, a little bit of silver paint on there went a long way. Could have used a little bit more, that's why he's not higher on the list, but there's not much more people could have asked for for a Lord Zed figure, and Hasbro delivered with full force, a really strong figure that you can pose the crap out of and it looks great on a shelf. Very nice release. For number 49, we have the Marvel Legends Cyclops and Phoenix 2-pack. And for me personally, this is the best thing Hasbro has released. It's, it's just so important to note how, how significant a little bit of paint can be. The Cyclops is a figure mold that we've seen 150 times by now. Uh, other than obviously the Cyclops head and maybe the hand, it, it's just the blue paint on there makes him stand out. And the same thing is true for Phoenix to a lesser degree with a little bit of shading. They're just incredibly attractive figures at a low price point. For number 48, we have the DCSH Batman, which is in the same vein of the DCSH Superman I mentioned earlier, only it's a little bit nicer, and more, more iconic and you get some different versions with this guy that are a little bit better, I think. Uh, this is the quintessential six inch Batman. There hasn't been a better one yet, objectively. Subjectively, I don't think it's even been close, but there are some that, that are you know, relatively close contenders, objectively. Uh, but this is the one, if you want a comic looking Batman, the DCSH Batman is the way to go. The black and gray one is technically better. I prefer the blue and gray one, it's my favorite, but you also have the all black Night Shadow Batman, which is probably no one's favorite, but it's cool as hell. And these figures look great up against any contemporary figures today. You put them up against Mattel or Hasbro, any day of the week, these guys are gonna stand out. They're gonna look great. And it's freaking Batman, so it had to be on the list, but it does have some issues like skinny faces and things like that, so it didn't go higher. But this is one you want. Any one of these or all three, you must have them in your collection. I deem it so if you were a Batman collector. For number 47, we are looking at the Play Arts Kai Halo 2 or Halo Anniversary Master Chief. 
Yes, it has some issues with the green consistency across the figure. You can see some of it's a little bit too blue, but boy, oh boy, is this one of the best Master Chief figures and one of the best Player Arts Kai figures ever released. This guy poses extremely well. It doesn't have particularly crazy proportions. It has a lot of nice details, which are completely accurate to the source material. It has some fun accessories, and it's gonna stand out on a shelf. It, there's not much more you can do with a Player Arts Kai figure that this can't do. It's, I worded that wrong, but maybe you got what I was saying. It's just a really, really strong release, and for Halo fans especially, it's a must have, without a doubt, hands down. And if you just like cool figures, this is one that's good for you. It's it's a one of the best Play Arts Kai figures for sure, without a doubt, easily one of the best. For number 46, we are looking at NECA's quarter scale Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm gonna show them one at a time, but uh, they're all four included here because they're all essentially the same figure. They do have unique sculpts to some extent and definitely have unique paint and unique accessories and whatnot, you get what I'm saying, but they are mostly the same, so I'm gonna include them all at once. And you guys know I absolutely love these. Like, personally, they're fantastic, but objectively they had enough issues that they didn't go higher on the list, predominantly the fact that they don't pose exceptionally well. You know, they have some limitations in that regard, and that was sacrificed for the sculpt, and I get it, but it is still something we have to consider, but they're fantastic, and if you're a Turtles fan, you should get them if you can fit them in your house. For number 45, we have the Storm Collectible Street Fighter V Chun-Li. Another one people are gonna have some gripes about. I know it's not perfect, the head falls off a little bit too easily, but it won't if it's just on the shelf, and the face could definitely be better. However, the body and the articulation and the details on this figure are highly impressive. You can pose the crap out of this thing. I've had it on a one foot on standing on the toe with its leg up in the air doing a kick on my shelf for over a year now and it hasn't fallen over once when other things have. It's, it's really well articulated, it's well designed, the details are phenomenal, the paints are clean, I love that they did the tampography around the waist, it just really brings the figure to life. Again, it could definitely be better. All of the figures on this list have flaws and you could argue against them for various reasons, but that doesn't make them not great in other ways. You can just pose the crap out of this thing and it's gonna stand there, it's gonna look good, it's gonna be great on your shelf, and it is by far the best Chun-Li action figure we've ever seen. For number 44, we have the D-Arts Mega Man, which has seen a few reissues, but was originally only around $40. I think it might have even been less than that. And for that reason alone, this guy makes the list. He was super well made for the time. Really nice paints. He was metallic, he was non-metallic, he was shiny, he was glossy, he was flat. Really highly posable, came with great accessories interchangeable parts, there wasn't much this guy didn't have, and I'm gonna go ahead and just say you can pick any one of the D-Arts Mega Man figures. Uh, it doesn't matter. Any, I think I might have said Mega Man and not X, but you get what I'm saying. You pick any one of them and it's gonna fit this spot. They're really strong releases, especially when they came out, and since then they haven't really seen a rival. Alrighty, in for number 43, we have NECA's Heroes of the Storm, or technically World of Warcraft, Illidan figure. It's a character I couldn't care less about, don't know much about at all, but boy oh boy did NECA make a nice looking figure out of this purple elf guy with a thing around his eyes. The, the green paint on his chest is really what sells this guy for me. The metallic paint up against the, against the flat purple with the pinkish shading and it's just a really appealing figure. They did a great job of recreating the character and capturing what he looks like. Not just making a figure of something but actually capturing it and putting it into plastic. Uh, this is this is one of the better figures NECA's, NECA's made. Unfortunately, it's just a character I don't care about, and it definitely had some issues, but uh, it's, it's well worthy of being on this list. For number 42, we are looking at the Masterpiece Beast Wars Megatron. I'm sure many of you thought it was going to be higher on the list, and I thought it was too, but as I was going through my videos and, and reconsidering all of these figures, there are just a few things on this guy, predominantly the price point, that hold him back. He's super duper expensive, and he does have a few issues in the quality control department. For example, mine has a loose part on his leg that makes him a little bit difficult to stand up. He's also quite top heavy, so even though he can technically achieve some pretty dynamic poses, it's fairly difficult to have him actually maintain that. And then just posing the dinosaur head arm in robot mode, very difficult to make it look good. Its beast mode is, however, very nice. I mean, the robot mode is too, it's still an excellent figure, but you know, it does have some issues and it didn't go higher on the list because of that. Whereas you'll see as we go, some of the other Beast Wars figures 
edge him out just a little bit, but he's still an absolutely impressive piece. For number 41, we are looking at the more modern SH Figure Arts Broly, the full power version, because this guy is essentially the replacement to the old Broly with the big bubbly parts, and this guy's not very bubbly, and he loses a little bit of appeal in that regard. He's not gonna stand out as much, but he will stand out for other reasons. Aside from his giant feet, which, yes, they should not be as big as they are, I, I get that, it is still a really nice figure. It's loaded with shading. The sculpt is, is really an anatomically well done for being something so stylized. And then the face sculpt is, is really well detailed. Uh, nice paintwork. I love the sculpt on it. And the hair is nice. All around, it's a really strong release. For number 40, we have the Marvel Legends Omega Red. This is a great example of what a $20 figure can be when they try. The only thing this guy's really lacking is a little bit of shading, but the anatomy and the sculpt work and the proportioning on this guy set him above most other Marvel Legends. And this guy just looks fantastic. I mean, the sculpt work is really what sells it. It's got great articulation, great anatomy. It's a, it's a character that really needed to be released and it comes in at a really low price point. I don't think there's many people that would argue against this guy being one of the best releases they've made. For number 39, we have the Robot Damashi First Touch RX-78-2. And this is a very unique release in that it's the only one that really tries to be accurate to the source material in terms of the coloring and whatnot. Yes, there are some that have different faces that are more accurate perhaps, but this guy has the white joints and the green hands, and it just looks exactly like it should if it's trying to look like the anime. And the thing is, it comes in at a really low price point for what it is. It's highly poseable, comes with a bunch of accessories, the level of finish is really nice. And I think if you're looking for the classic Gundam, like the Gundam, this is the figure to get. There are tons of RX-78-2s out there, whether they're Robot Damashi or other things, but this is the one that's gonna look like the RX-78-2 did in the anime the most, and I think you're gonna enjoy it probably the most as well. For number 38, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Ninja Turtles, and I am including all of them because they are even more than the NECA ones, the exact same figure with some very slight changes. It turns out I never reviewed Michelangelo, so I don't think he'll be showing up on this video. I don't know what happened there, but they're all the same. And these guys, so here's the thing. They are really, really nice releases, and you can pose the crap out of them, but they do have some issues. You have some parts that don't pose very well at all, and the idea of including die-cast in them was not a good one as far as I'm concerned, so it holds them back. But as far as Ninja Turtles go, these are some of the best. For number 37, we have the Figma Attack on Titan figures. And much like the Turtles, they're all essentially the same figure, minus a few details here and there. But they are maybe, maybe the best for various reasons, the best Figma figures that they've released. These guys are super dynamic, highly posable, very accurate to the source material, and loaded with details and accessories. And you'll see here in just a second, when they're posed up on the shelf, they are probably the most dynamic figures you could own. For number 36, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Iron Man Mark 7. And I'm putting this one in above the four, despite the alternate head from the four, because this one is probably the best likeness to the Iron Man suit itself. The other ones all have a lot of issues with proportionality and kind of stylization. This one is by far the most screen accurate as far as I can tell. Yeah, the red's probably a little bit too dark, but if you're looking for a screen accurate, source accurate Iron Man suit that is highly posable and well made, this is the one for you. It does have some issues with articulation, of course, and that's not uncommon for Iron Man figures from, from Bandai. But the paintwork on it's clean, the sculpt is clean, and like I said, it's super accurate, so it had to go on the list. Plus, it's my favorite Iron Man suit, so that, that didn't hurt it being on the list either, but it's still really good. Regardless of that, tons of accessories, great, great likeness. You can't really go wrong with this figure. Coming in at number 35, we have NECA's quarter scale Deadpool. This figure was quite the topic of conversation when it first came out. It, it was NECA's really, their first foray into comic figures. And it's gigantic, and it's a unique design, and all unique parts obviously, and really well detailed. You can see there's texturing throughout all of his clothes. Lots of paintwork, lots of accessories, lots of posability. The only thing really holding this guy back is that his upper body is relatively small to his lower body and the consistency of red throughout definitely is an eyesore for some people, let's say. Uh, it could be better, but it's still a really solid figure. For number 34, 
we have the Mafex Justice League Batman. And this figure is one of the best Batman figures ever. And if you liked the Ben Affleck Batman, then this is one you really need to get. The, the pleather cape looks great. It doesn't have wires in it though. And the body looks fantastic. And it doesn't have the usual quality control issues that Mafex had. It's not a perfect release. There are definitely some issues. Again, I probably said that more times than I should have, but I feel like everybody's gonna be saying, but that figure has this and that. And yeah, I know, but it's still really good. And look at the sculpt and paint work on this thing. It's a really great screen accurate version of Batman. There's only one better as far as I'm concerned, and that's number 33, which is the tactical suit version of the same Batman. This thing is even better because it's basically an updated version. It has wires in the cape and some better articulation in some places, and even more detail, more paintwork, more sculpt work, more everything. It's that great Batman, but even better. They're both fantastic, pick whichever one you like, but they both belong on the list because they're unique figures that are highly impressive in their own rights. Some of my absolute favorite figures to look at. Alrighty, up for number 32, we have an old one, an oldie but a goodie. This is 480p goodness. This is the, I believe it was actually Dark of the Moon, Jetwing Prime. This is an Optimus Prime figure, figure that's been modified to have the giant wings and guns and everything. And boy oh boy, was this something else. I mean, there's been a ton of good Transformer figures out there, but none of them, at least as far as I was aware, didn't have the level of detail and screen accuracy until these Michael Bay movies. Like, they're just so well made. And the price point, these leader class figures, I want to say were 60 bucks only. And they're big. They're like 10 inches tall and loaded with detail. And yeah, there's a backpack, but you can kind of push those down and stick them down by his button. It's better. But lots of paint, lots of molded coloring, lots of clear plastic and just everything like they're so well done very screen accurate robot mode very screen accurate vehicle mode then you get the giant stupid gun wing things which were a thing in the movie kind of and they work in vehicle mode and robot mode and there aren't too many transformer figures that are better for your money than this uh it's just really nice for number 31 we have the marvel legends icons venom the best by far venom figure to date. Again, this was a $20 figure at a 12 inch height and that's just, you don't get stuff like this anymore. You can tell every part of this was sculpted with care. It was designed to look good. It was designed to evoke the same feelings you get when you read about Venom in the comics or see him in the comics or on TV or anywhere else. Like it, these figures captured the character and it's just so rare to get that nowadays that I feel like I had to include these. I had to. They they don't come like this anymore. And especially considering it's been so hard for Hasbro to get a Venom figure that isn't garbage, I really wanted to show what one could look like when you try just a little bit for such a simple character design. For number 30, we have the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Trunks, or the reissue version with fewer accessories and different paint, but you can pick whichever one you like. I've reviewed them both. You can check for yourself. But this guy, especially the original version, when he came out, probably one of the most articulated figures and one of the most accessory riddled figures there has been. Lots of paint on him as well, really nice sculpt work, perfect show accuracy, probably not, but you're not gonna get a figure that's as good as this one, at least at the time, by many companies. It's a, it's a really, really good release in so many ways. Boy, when this thing came out, it was something. And it still holds up today. There's a reason they haven't made a new Trunks figure like this, I think. And it's because this one is so darn good. And here's the other thing, it came with an alternate head, whereas most of the figures nowadays, they don't. They want you to buy a different figure. This one came with everything you needed right there. Really, really nice. Alrighty, up for number 29, we have Storm Collectibles Cyborg Ninjas. Now at the time of making this video, I only have Smoke here, uh, or at least I've only reviewed him. Cyrax is downstairs. Uh, but uh, anyway, these guys are, though probably less significant than the regular ninjas, better figures, for sure, by far. They have really nice accessories, really great posability, really great accuracy to the source material. There's almost nothing wrong with these guys other than maybe broad shoulders. And that's hardly a big deal. These cyborg ninjas, if you don't have anything against the character design, are definitely figures you want to check out. They're, they're super poseable, just like the regular ninjas, and they look great on a shelf. Coming in at number 28, we have NECA's 7-inch Papa Kratos from the new God of War game. And I never played the game. I don't have a PlayStation. I don't have any particular connection to Kratos. 
Uh, but this one is just incredible. It's it's one of the best looking figures NECA has ever made. Definitely has some issues with the paint being a little bit inconsistent for the stripe and the joints being a little floppy and loose here and there. But the amount of detail they packed into this and still were able to maintain articulation and the number of accessories. People keep telling me, oh, you can't expect too much for $20. Well, this figure was like a $25 figure, $5 more only, and look at it. It's got all of the articulation, all of the paint, a bunch of accessories. You just, this is another example of what can be done. I think people need to realize more often how good a figure can be, rather than trying to justify why a bad figure isn't. I think it's very important. I think NECA does a good job more often than not of showing us and giving us examples of that, and this is one of them. For number 27, we, <laughs> I forgot about that. We have the Play Arts Kai Arkham City Harley Quinn. Another really strong release from Play Arts. This is again, closer to the older style they did before they went onto the full Play Arts Kai. It's kind of an in-between thing, even though it was part of that line. And boy, oh boy, does this thing just have a ton of detail. And that's the reason I picked it for sure, not any other reasons. But if you look at the arm or the stomach, I think I'll zoom in here in a minute. Uh, they just, the tattoos they put on there, the paintwork throughout the rest of the suit, the fact that they used some kind of satiny paints for the leathers and some gloss for the patent leather, shading on the skin, shading in the hair, accuracy to the source material. And again, the detail on the arm and the stomach for the tattoos, it's just, you don't get stuff like that anymore, more often than not. This thing is gonna always stand out on a shelf. It's gonna look good pretty much no matter what kind of collection you have. It's just a really, really well-made figure and you can tell a lot of care went into it. Very nicely detailed figure. Coming in at number 26, we have the Mega Megatron. This is the giant one that's absolutely humongous. It doesn't transform, so I know some Transformer people hate it, but if you're in the market for a Transformer figure that is gonna catch attention and look really good and pose really well, and also, by the way, the eyes light up and the gun light up, this is the thing for you. Yeah, he's lacking a little bit of detail, but he still has a lot for what he is, and at the price point of under $200, this giant thing, which is so well articulated, and it does have the light up features, it's a really good buy. Uh, obviously, I can't show you everything about every figure here, but the posability on these guys is pretty incredible, and again, they light up, and they're humongous. For number 25, we have the Masterpiece Cheetor figure, which at one point I said was the best of the Masterpiece Beast Wars figures, and unfortunately he did get edged out in this new ranking, but he's still a really good one. The only thing, okay, so there's two things holding this guy back, and I, I wanna point out why I'm talking about the negatives in this. It's because everything else is good, and I'm pointing out the negatives so you guys get an idea of how good the other parts are. So the negatives on this guy is that the paint scratches a little bit too easily, right? Not a super big deal. And that they use the dot matrix printing on him rather than full on shading and paint. So the spots on him, as you'll see, I'm pretty sure I'll zoom in here in a minute because the rest of the figure is gorgeous. The metallics are great, the plastics, the paints, everything looks really good. But when you get close to it, you can see the dots. I guess I'm not gonna zoom in on it. I don't know, it's been a while since I filmed this. So anyway, you can see the dots in the dots spots on him and it does take away. His beast mode's pretty good. All around it's an excellent figure, but those damn dots keep it from being higher on the list. For number 24, we have the Sota Street Fighter T-Hawk figure. One of the main reasons I expanded this decade review to include figures from before the decade started these Soda Street Fighter, Soda Street Fighter figures, if I can speak English, are just the pinnacle of what you can get when you try. These figures were made with so much heart and soul. It comes through in every little way. They're loaded with detail. They have tons of unique sculpts, though not exclusively unique sculpts. It's just so much effort went into them. And these were being released for the $15 price point at concurrently with Marvel Legends. Not when Marvel Legends first came out, but soon after, these guys were there and they stand up today. Any figure you buy from a domestic company, these guys will stand right next to them and look gorgeous, look beautiful. They're, they're just so well done. Even they did the painting on the jeans, the sculpt work, the anatomy, it, it's really, really impressive. And we can go on to talk about that with number 23, which is Vega from the same line. Not quite as detailed as T-Hawk, but even better articulated. And it's the best Vega we have to date including the SH Figure Arts one which just released. And this is a $15 figure from like 12 years ago, more, like 15 years ago. 
very, very nicely detailed, well articulated. They're essentially Marvel Legends if Marvel Legends were all made with tons of love and care and passion. Because that's what happened when Jerry was making these figures. He made them because he wanted them, not just to make money. And you can see that even more with number 22, which is a Don. It's not a super popular character. Most people probably don't even know who a Don is. But look at that figure and tell me it's not one of the best six inch domestic figures you've ever seen. You can't, I mean, you could, but you'd be lying. Look at the shading, look at the sculpt work, look at the extra parts that are added on, the accuracy to the source material if you're familiar with it, or just the quality of the sculpt. It actually looks like a character rather than a generic head that was kind of tweaked to kind of look like a character. These guys, man, if it was up to me, I'd put soda at the top of every list all the time, even if it didn't make sense, because the level of passion and heart and the quality overall, yeah, there were some issues, and 21's a good example of that. There are definitely some issues with loose joints and whatnot, but it all comes through, and it's something we don't see anymore these days. And you'll see in a second, I think I zoom in on the, on the flag on his shoulder at one point. Yeah, there you go. That flag is better done on that figure from 15 years ago for $15 than it's done on the Storm Collectibles Guile recently that came out for 80 or whatever it was, and it's a bigger figure. It's just, you don't see figures like this anymore. And honestly, I could probably put these higher on the list, but since they were older than a decade, I didn't want to get them too high. But you really can't beat this line objectively. It's a shame how the company didn't stick around in its same capacity, but it, really, really impressive figures. In at number 20, we have the SH Figure Arts Frieza. This is the original version. I do think the original one is better than the reissue with fewer stuff. Fewer pieces, not fewer stuff. And this guy is shaded all the way around, has really nice accessories, good paintwork. The purple on the head is gorgeous, very screen accurate, very fun to pose. One of the best releases overall from the SH Figure Arts line, and it's a must have. Probably the best, best villain in the series, too. For number 19, we have the True Force Collectibles Mega Man X. This happens to be the SDCC version, which I prefer because the color scheme is gorgeous. It looks like the full armor version of X, and it's the one I would recommend if you're only going to get one, but you'll see in a minute you can include any of the different paint schemes. They're all really great. But this is a Mega Man figure which is just incredibly well detailed the paint job is exceptionally clean it's all sculpted and engineered really really well and on top of that it lights up anything that lights up gets bonus points as far as i'm concerned and so this guy does but very very well executed if you're a Mega Man fan or just a fan of anything that's well made this is one you definitely want to consider this is one of my favorite figures subjectively out of my entire collection i'm not a huge Mega Man fan but this one there's just something about it. It has a little bit of that wow factor, and you can tell it was really made with care. Coming in at number 18, we have NECA's Ultimate Predator from Concrete Jungle. This is the Scarface Predator. It's essentially kind of sort of the same as the AVP Predators, but it comes with more stuff and has a lot more detail to it, a little bit more uniqueness, and it's probably the best all-around Predator figure they've released. Uh, at least in my estimation, I can't think of one that has better detail, more accessories, better articulation. It's all around a pretty functional figure, and you can see it's just chock full of detail. Sculpt-wise, paint-wise, the articulation worked really well on this one. Whether it was just mine or not, I don't know. But this one is, like I said, I think it's the best example of a Predator they've made. And it's kind of what they do. They make Predators, so that should be telling you something. If you're interested in getting into their product line, then this is the one I would start with. It's not one of the newest ones, but I do think it's the best. So go ahead and check this one out and I think you'll enjoy it. Alrighty, in at number 17, we have the SH Figure Arts Awakening Goku. And this is a figure which is just tons of fun to play with. It can be found at a very low price, relatively speaking. It released at a pretty low price. And it does feature most of the modern articulation for the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball figures. It has a lot of shading on it, a lot of nice colored plastic, molded pieces are all good. There's not much this figure is lacking other than some of the joint work could be a little bit more modern, could be a little bit better. And maybe I guess the coloring on the, on the clothes could be a little bit more saturated, though in these photos it looks pretty darn good. There aren't too many figures which are more fun and higher quality at the price point than this one. Now unfortunately there is one that I would recommend over it just by the slightest of margins. And at number 16 we have the Saiyan Raised on Earth or Base Form Goku. Because it's a more iconic version of Goku, it's more versatile, and it's newer and cheaper. 
if you like the other one better because it's more dynamic looking, that's perfectly valid. But this one is the classic Goku, so I bumped it out over that one just for that reason. But you can see they're both excellent. They look great together, maybe get both. But if you're looking for a classic Goku figure, you have to go with this one. And that's why I put it on the list. You don't need the tattered clothes one. You need this one. And it's really, really well done. There's really not much wrong with this guy other than it's inexpensive, relatively speaking, so it has fewer accessories. But it's definitely one you should own if you're into Dragon Ball at all. Coming in at number 15, we have the Masterpiece Optimus Primal. And I'm starting to realize that filming this in one take without a script is making my voice go. <laughs> but hopefully you guys can understand me well enough because we're in the home stretch here almost. And this is an excellent release. It does have a few quirks that drive me absolutely nuts. I don't like the way they did the fur. I don't like the way they did the elbows. But as far as Beast Wars go, you can't collect Beast Wars without having Optimus Primal. He's such an iconic character and probably the best Optimus there has been, as far as I'm concerned anyway. And this figure does work mostly really well. He's going to look absolutely stunning on a shelf. The blend of metallics and mattes and satins and the painted parts and, and like I said, the smoother metallic parts. It's just really stunning. Even in beast mode, it's really good if you don't look at it from behind. And man, this thing's just really, really nice. It lights up. It has nice accessories. Excellent example of why this new Transformers Beast War or Transformers Masterpiece line is doing so well. They're taking classic characters and, and just giving us exactly what we want for them. Minus a few issues here and there that we can probably all live with. So this is one you need to have. Um, it's probably not the best objectively, but it is Optimus, so it's pretty fantastic. Coming in at 14, we have the Figma Other M Samus, which is, I know it's Metroid Other M, which is not everyone's favorite, but it is probably the best Samus figure ever to date. Yeah, I know the newer one has some better features, but this one poses a lot better and it comes with better accessories. This one, other than being from the source material that people don't like as much, is superior in most ways. It is the one I would recommend for sure over the other one, but you could go with the newer one. I have reviewed that if you wanna check it out. But this is the one I like. This is the one I think most people will like. And like I said, it does come with better accessories and it poses a little bit better and is still excellent. But you can see right there, it is just such a high quality figure. It's gonna look great on a shelf and it's definitely a must have if you're a Nintendo fan. For number 13, we have the SH Figure Arts Majin Buu, and I have the wrong head on there because I thought I was being funny, and I, I was, but it doesn't help this video, so let's look at the real head that's right there. This is a character I don't care for, but the figure itself is excellent. It's highly accurate to the source material. It's huge, <laughs> relatively speaking. It comes in at a reasonable price point. It articulates very well. It has enough clean paintwork on there to make it look good. And you're gonna be able to do basically whatever you want with this figure on your shelf. It's gonna pose well, it's gonna look great, it's gonna stand out, it's big enough to have a little extra appeal. It's bubblegum colored. How many figures do you have that look like that? Probably none other than this one. It's, it's all around an excellent figure. I wish the character was slightly more significant, but it is it is great. I wish I liked the character more personally too, because it's a really, really strong release. In at number 12, we have the Mafex Spider-Man figure, which as you guys know from my review, this is a fairly recent figure. It's, it's not perfect, it definitely has a couple issues, but that's it, just a couple. It has mostly a really good situation going on from the proportions being overall really good. Maybe the legs could be a little bit longer for Spider-Man, hard to say. Maybe the colors could be slightly tweaked like they are in the package a little bit, but that's about it. It's really good. You can pose the crap out of this thing. It comes with a bunch of different accessories. The level of finish on it's very nice. The only real downside on that is the brightness of the chest, but maybe that was intentional. Man, this is the best Spider-Man figure out there. That's not particularly unique. It is the best six inch, let's say, the best six inch-ish Spider-Man figure out there by far. You need to have this in your collection. The problem with it, I guess, really is the price point. It's expensive as heck. It's really expensive, but I think you'll you'll be able to justify that once you own it. Coming in at number 11, we have the Variable Action Heroes Ace from One Piece. Uh, this is a character which has a huge fan following, but didn't actually see much time in the show or the manga. And it's just... It, it's unfortunate because it's a really cool character and the figure is as good as the character is 
Uh, this variable Action Heroes line kind of died off quickly and they had some serious QC issues, but this one is one of the best by far. Like, it is the best of, of that line and it's one of the best figures I own. Uh, the sculpt work is great. The engineering for the articulation is highly impressive. The detail work on the figure is really nice. The accessories are great. It poses well. It looks good on a shelf. Uh, I'm starting to see that I tend to like figures without clothes on them. Didn't know that about myself, <laughs> but no, this one's really, really good. I don't know anybody that wouldn't like this. Honestly, it's a, it's a really good figure. The posability, the detail, the paintwork, the finish. Man, this one's a solid release for sure. Coming in at number 10, now the real home stretch. SH Figure Arts Krillin, adult Krillin. I, I know I've had this guy in various top 10 lists before and sometimes he was edged out by others, but this time I've decided he belongs at the top of the list or at least near it more so than before. There, There's something about this figure. I don't know what it is, actually I do. He comes with an energy effect. Not enough of these Dragon Ball characters which should have energy effects come with them. He does, and he poses really well, and the figure is really accurate, and the level of finish is really nice. There's almost nothing wrong with this figure. It's so well done. And he comes with an energy effect, and he was at a really low price point when he released. I think he was like 40 bucks for that amount of articulation, for that kind of paintwork, for that kind of accessory allotment. It's, it's a heck of a figure, it really is. It, he's tiny, he's supposed to be tiny. I can't hold that against him, it is exactly what it should be. I love this figure and it's objectively really good too. Coming in at number nine, we have the Flame Toys Drift figure. Now this is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the most expensive figure on the list and it doesn't transform. And I get that that's a problem for Transformers figures, but I have not had a single figure in my collection that has as much detail, as many moving parts, as many light up parts, as much care, as much attention, as much quality as this figure. It is truly something to behold. Why they chose to make their first one of this line drift, I have no idea, but I don't care. It is an exceptional figure. Whether or not you wanna spend the $300 of the original MSRP is up to you, but it is worth every penny of it from an objective on the paper, on the books kind of perspective. It is worth it for sure. You can pose the crap out of it. The details are all excellent. Accessories are excellent. It's just truly a stunning figure, but it's super expensive, so it's not higher on the list. It's worth the money, but that's about it. For number eight, we have the Storm Collectibles Ultra Street Fighter II Sagat figure. And this one belongs on the list because there are very few figures that when you take them out of the package, you get a sort of sense of satisfaction. This guy is a satisfying purchase. He is every bit as well made as you would hope he would be. It's a huge figure. It doesn't come in at an exceptionally high price point. The level of finish on it is great. The articulation is really good. Uh, I personally like the SDCC version because it has even better paint job, but you could go with the blue shorts one. They're both exceptional. And, and they're just gonna look great on a shelf. You can put them in the iconic poses. They're gonna match up against any figure you put them against and it's gonna look great. I, I personally love this figure and I can't think of anything really bad about it. It, it basically just looks like a little statue on your shelf. If you couldn't see the articulation lines, it, it's that level of good. It's really, really nice. Coming in at number seven, we have NECA's quarter scale Kratos figure. Again, I'm no particular fan of Kratos or honestly Q, Q scale figures because they're so damn big, but this one is just something to behold. The level of detail. They got even more detail than the little one because it's bigger and that makes sense, but they did it. And these guys are so cheap for what they are at $110 or right around there, depending on where you buy it. For an 18 inch figure with full on articulation, full on paint, full on sculpt, extra accessories. It's just, it's like looking at a small person in your room, this guy. It's its just incredible. It's, it's so well executed and you can pose him. I think he even has better appearance than the little one. Like I think they maybe changed the proportions a little bit, maybe out of necessity, maybe it's just coincidence, but even still, this guy is just really something to look at. If you're a God of War fan or just a fan of cool figures and have the space, you need to get this one. It's super duper awesome. And I couldn't care less about the new God of War game other than I hear it's awesome. Like, I, I've never played it, I don't care. But I love having this figure. Coming in at number six, we have the MP10 Hasbro version of the masterpiece Optimus Prime. Now, 
I know some people are gonna say, well, the new Optimus Prime is better. The new Masterpiece Optimus Prime is better. It's different and it costs like three times as much. So this one makes the list, that one doesn't. Plus I didn't review that one, so buzz off. And there he is up against the MP-01, which was a lot bigger and a lot heavier and not as screen accurate and not as nice of a finish. This newer MP-10 version is just a really, it's a real treat of a Transformers figure. It's great in robot mode. It's perfectly action figure-esque. You can pose them very well, no problem at all. No loose joint issues like the big guy. It transforms into robot mode and vehicle mode very nicely. It's a good transformation, looks good at either end. It comes with a bunch of accessories, including the trailer, which can be opened up and used in vehicle mode, but I don't really get why people would do that. You can use it in robot mode to store as accessories or to use them for like they did in the cartoon, I guess. I don't know. But you get the trailer, you get the gun, you get the X, you get the posability, you get everything you want out of an Optimus Prime figure. In at number five, we have the Marvel Legends Icons Captain America. Much like the face-off Captain America, because this is the bigger version of that. Yes, I know the A is crooked on his head. That I have bad luck. You guys know I have bad luck with quality control. But this is for a $20 figure, the best I think you can get. Yes, it's big, I get it, and it's old. But that's my point with these things, is they're old and they're still this good compared to what we're getting nowadays for $20. I know the money's different value now, but consider that. The old figures, let's say were 10 bucks, the regular ones, and these guys were 20. Now we're paying 20 for the regular ones and 50 for the 12 inch ones. Look at what we're getting for the money, relatively speaking. It's not even close. These old figures, these old icons figures were just oozing quality and detail. Man, we just don't get stuff like this anymore. I don't think we ever will again, honestly. But for the money, this figure is really something to behold. It's really, really incredible that they were able to produce this and get it out to fans for the price point. Coming in at number four, we have the 18 inch Spider-Man figure, not made by NECA. This was the first 18 inch comic book figure that was hyper articulated or at least even relatively <laughs> articulated. And it came out back when <laughs> Tobey Maguire was still Spider-Man. And so it's just, the amount of detail on this thing, whether it's sculpted or painted, yes, it could definitely be better, but oh my goodness, this is the most articulated figure ever, I think, and it's humongous. The only real downside to this thing is the face could look a little better, I guess, so we'll add that. But also, some of the joints were really stiff and issuey. There were problems, but holy crap, an 18-inch figure with this much articulation? Unheard of. In at number three, we have the Transformers Masterpiece Dinobot. Not just on the list because I absolutely love Dinobot. If that was the case, he would be number one, but because he is an absolutely incredible figure. He looks great in dino mode, but he looks even better in robot mode. There's virtually nothing wrong with the robot mode on this figure. It's so well done. It's like the perfect recreation of the source material. The head even lights up. That's awesome. Bonus points right there, I told you. Clean paintwork all the way around, lots of molded parts, fully functioning articulation as an action figure once he's transformed. Like, there's no kibble, there's really like nothing wrong with this at all. It's such a good figure. It's a little expensive, yes, and his sword came in pink chrome rather than the regular chrome, which I'll fight you over. It's not supposed to be pink, that's because it was reflecting a pink background. Stop saying his sword's supposed to be pink. But it's, it's a really great figure. And if it was up to my personal taste, this would be number one. But we have a couple things on here that are gonna edge this guy out objectively. But boy, oh boy, man, this is one you really, really need to have. If you're a Transformers fan or just a good figure, probably my favorite figure in my collection personally. Such a nice release. And he's huge. I should probably mention that. He's huge. He's really, really big. So even at the higher price point, it's, it's something else, man. This is really good. I want to buy another one just to have it, and I don't, I can't, but I should. Coming in at number two, we have the Mega Optimus Prime, the giant one, just like the Megatron we looked at, and I know people are going to freak out. It doesn't transform when it's a transform when it's at number two. Yes, because look at it. It's absolutely stunning. It's super articulate. You can pose the you can pose it a lot, let's just say. Every part of this guy is really posable. Relatively nice level of finish. It comes in cheaper than some of the other figures we've, lo we've looked at, even though he's humongous. He lights up, his eyes light up wonderfully. God, that's, that's gorgeous, look at that. 
Look at it. You put that in any collection room and it is going to draw attention and people are going to come up and look at it and it's still going to be good. It's not one of those figures that's just good from far away. You can pose it any way you want or it looks gorgeous just standing there just in a neutral hero pose and it's awesome. And then you can open the chest and he's got the matrix in there and that thing lights up. He's got his gun. It's just... Yeah, he doesn't transform. How many of you are actually transforming your figures on a regular basis? I guess some people do that, but I'm guessing most people transform into robot mode and use the character like that because if you wanted a truck, you could go buy a truck. If you want a robot that looks like Optimus Prime, you gotta have a robot that looks like Optimus Prime, and that's what this is. I absolutely love this. I'm not even the biggest Transformers guy, but this is one figure that I would probably never get rid of unless I absolutely had to. I mean, there's a few, but this is one of them. It's such an impressive piece. It's a statement piece, even though it comes in at like 150 bucks, I think, when it released. 18 inches of awesome. It's about 12 inches across. It's humongous, and it's just really awesome. So yes, number two, even though it doesn't transform, fight me in the comment section. And lastly, coming in at number one, everybody's favorite, NECA's a seven inch. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action figures. And you guys know I'm not the biggest Turtles fan. I have probably like, I don't know, 50 Turtles figures out of thousands in my collection. They're not my thing. I grew up with them, but these figures make the list because they are to collecting now what Soda Toys was to collecting back when it was around. These guys were made with so much care, so much love and passion, and it comes through in the figure. And at a 20 to, what are they, like 22 bucks, something like that? I don't remember. I haven't purchased the individual ones in a long time. But for the price point, they're just incredible. They're better articulated than the big ones. They're better balanced than the big ones. They have plenty of accessories, loads of detail. They're screen accurate. Unless you dislike the Ninja Turtles for some reason, these are figures you need to have in your collection. They are so well made. They are absolutely worth the money. No matter what collection you have, if you put them on the shelf, these guys are going to stand out. People are going to want, going to, want to look at them. You're going to be able to pose them. You're going to enjoy handling them. There's just so there's so much about them that makes them better than almost anything else that comes out of the market these days. Even from NECA themselves, these figures are a cut above. They're highly impressive in almost every way. Uh, you can't tell the difference between the little ones and the big ones. Like, look at the amount of detail on that for a 7-inch figure. Actually, they're not. They're closer to 6 inches. Look at the amount of detail. It looks like it came right out of the movie. Absolutely impressive figures. Even if I didn't care about the turtles at all, I would, I would buy these, and I would love them. Well, alright guys, that is it. That is the best I could do to rank order the top 100 figures of the decade. Plus some. It's a very difficult thing to rank this many items out of so many more items. So please do consider that, you know, it could be very different if I did this on a different day. Or maybe it wouldn't. Maybe it'd end up being the exact same way. If there's anything you thought that didn't belong on the list, then go ahead and let me know. And if there's anything you thought I missed, you can let me know that too. Please do remember, though, I couldn't include things I haven't reviewed. That wouldn't make any sense, so I didn't do it. But please, before you go, let me know if there are any top 10 lists you would like me to do before the end of the year, other than just the usual top 10 figures of the year. I'd, I'd like to try to get that done for you, assuming YouTube doesn't explode. And then lastly, I just want to say thanks, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I know it was a task. And thanks for watching all of my content over the last 10 years. You guys have been an integral part in making this channel grow and to become what it is. So I just really have to say thanks. I can't do it without you guys, so please... For my sake and yours, keep collecting.